Hey everyone. Um, so if you don't know, I am running a Runeterra based campaign, Runeterra being the, the World of League of Legends, uh, on this channel, Heroes of Runeterra. And I thought it would be really cool to do some lore videos with some of the research that I've been doing um, around the League of Legends universe, around Runeterra. Um, and, you know, just kind of share that because I think a lot of people are really interested in this. And Riot has actually released a lot of really cool tools for diving deeper into the lore. Um, some of the information sources are kind of disparate, so I'll kind of sprinkle in some of what I've come up with and some of the decision making I've made along the way. Uh, and I do want to preface uh, that this is this is not by any means like I'm not an expert in Runeterra lore, League of Legends lore. I'm learning this as I go, and so I'm kind of starting um, in the localized areas of my campaign and expanding knowledge out. So I'm gonna miss things. I'm gonna skip over things. I'm going to. Uh, potentially even kind of morph things to fit you know the world that I'm creating for my campaign um, so if if you have any extra insights and or anything like that that and you want to share them in the comments that'd be really cool I'd love to learn uh, a little bit more as well so diving into it uh, I, I really wanted to find a cool launching point for my campaign um, I really liked the whole storyline around Noxus uh, trying to invade Ionia uh, previously, this would be several years before the campaign started, uh, and thinking that maybe Bilgewater had had a major part in that, uh, and that Bilgewater is kind of a staging ground for much of the the Noxian invasions. So of course they can, you know, get across here, uh, but Bilgewater represents a potential threat in the area with their, you know, pirate fleets and you know uh, privateers and what have you. And so um, I thought it'd be really cool if. Uh, kind of going into potentially a second Noxian invasion. Um, they The Noxians actually came to Bilgewater and were, were trying to basically get all the pirates in the area to work for them. And so they say, well, we'll pay you if, if you work with our fleet and don't help the Ionians. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I'm using the League of Legends Universe interactive map, which is really cool. And you should go there and click around if you've never seen it. Um, it's you know got great animation and information and all that sorts of stuff. So Bilgewater, um, yeah, Bilgewater is actually just one city on the Serpent Isles, and you can see the Serpent Isles here. Um, the Serpent Isles are home to a group of people called the Buru, uh, and they actually make up most of the population of the Isles, with Bilgewater being one small part of it. And obviously everyone's kind of heard of Bilgewater uh, from dock gangs and monster hunters and pirates and, and traders and everything uh, of that sort. And so I see it as kind of a central you know, kind of a central area between, you know, if you're going anywhere, um, there's a good chance you end up in Bilgewater, right? You're probably not going to go from Ionia through Noxus, right? So you're probably going through Bilgewater, maybe through Piltover and Zahn, over to Demacia if you're trying to get over there. Um, so it's this really cool melting pot, pot of all kinds of cultures and, and races and, and um, information. Uh, and let's just talk a little bit about the life in Bilgewater. And so um, obviously you can see there's a number of, of heroes kind of associated with this. Everyone knows Graves, Misfortune, uh, Nautilus, uh, etc. And, you know, as much as I'd love to in my campaign to feature all of these awesome characters, um, I will be selecting kind of a few to really hone in on and, and really do justice. Um, uh, Elawi's here. Uh, she's she's actually very central to the Buru culture, and we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. But. Um, yeah, life in Bilgewater is fast, it's furious, it's violent. Uh, one of the main kind of uh, elements of the city, of the bay, is this bounty board. Uh, and, and you can see, you know, people will, will place bounties. Uh, and this is actually misfortune. It was famous uh, for kind of walking to Bilgewater um, at a fairly young age and, and just taking bounty after bounty and, and kind of making a name for herself all the way to the point where she uh, could challenge Gangplank, who Gangplank was known as the Reaver King. Um, he was basically in charge of, of Bilgewater. Um, and this is a funny little thing where Gangplank continually raises the, the bounty on his own name um, as kind of a challenge to people. And I took that in my campaign, actually, and said, you know, as he continued to raise the bounty, more bounty hunters would come after them. And as he defeated these bounty hunters, he would actually hire them if they were good enough. Um, and I thought that that was, you know, just a really interesting little character uh, snippet in there. Another thing, uh, you know, another element of kind of the violence of living in Bilgewater, uh, they don't have a lot of real estate in the nearby area. It's a lot of cliff faces and that sort of thing. Uh, and so they actually bury their dead um, in a place called, uh, 
off of a place called White Wharf, which it's called White Wharf uh, because it's basically covered in bird poop. Uh, there's so much uh, bird poop there that it's you know kind of undesirable to go there. Uh, but they bury them in you know these kind of underwater caskets, and they'll float on buoys as as grave markers. Uh, and you know you've got everything from you know the poor who may have kind of mass grave situations where you know they'll bury people off of one kind of like family buoy um or others where they'll have you know these nice really um designed caskets and that sort of thing so um really interesting you know a, a lot of the life here is very violent in different ways um it's not just kind of bounty hunters and pirates though um a, a major part of bilgewater is monster hunting and so the seas in that area uh, are filled with these giant monsters and, and the, the resources on these monsters is very valuable. Think of it like whaling, for instance. Uh, and so, you know, harpooners are in high demand and they've got all these really cool um, weapons and gadgets. Take a look at those. Um, you know, really kind of brutal yet elegant designs in a lot of ways. Um, designed to get the job done, but they also have a great kind of aesthetic to them. Uh, and you can see kind of some of the tools of the monster hunting trade here. Uh, one really interesting thing, and so, you know, Miss Fortune or Captain Fortune being one of the major um, players in Bilgewater now after she actually dethroned Gangplank as the Reaver King and then now kind of putting plunging the city into a bit of chaos, which in my campaign is allowing the Noxians to come in and, and try to, uh, you know, take some control of the city and... and um, leverage the resources of, of the monster hunters and, the, and the, the pirates as a sort of mercenary navy. But Misfortune's blunderbusses are really integral to the history of Bilgewater. Um, her parents, her, her father uh, and, and mother, I believe, were both uh, gunsmiths, basically. And Gangplank, you know, before he was this huge pirate, came by and ordered a pair of blunderbusses because they were some of the best, you know, gunsmiths in Runeterra. Uh, and he came back uh, and basically he stole them, killed her parents, and uh, I believe he, he just smashed them as like a final act of spite. Uh, and so Miss Fortune's backstory revolves around these pistols um, and kind of repairing them and then walking into Bilgewater and making her way through life by taking these bounties using these, these blunderbusses. Uh, and so these, these two little blunderbusses that, uh, well, they're actually fairly large, but these two inconspicuous blunderbusses are, are central to Bilgewater history in that they led to the point where um, uh, Captain Fortune and, and Gangplank were warring in the streets and, and it ended uh, with uh, Fortune kind of blowing up the, the Deadpool, which was Gangplank's flagship and, and kind of throwing everything into chaos. And in my campaign, this is around the time when the, the Noxians show up to start imposing their version of rule or order. Uh, and like I said, yeah, they, there's a lot of artistry and really cool aesthetic around the brutality of Bilgewater. You know, there's a lot of, uh, they kind of take Buru culture and, and designs and iconography and kind of mix it with traditional pirate iconography and designs. And, um, you know, like I said, monster hunting is, is a major part of um, both Buru life and Bilgewater culture. It's, it's central to their economy. And so there's these really cool, on the other side of the Serpent Isles, the Buru have actually developed these defenses against the monsters with these giant underwater horns that they'll blow uh, to kind of ward them off. And um, their culture has been very kind of around these these monsters, around uh, the fact that they exist. Those would be the, the largest natural threats that they would, ta um, that they would taste traditionally. And, um, you know, you, you can see uh, this cool amalgamation of, like, the ancient Buru culture with the new, like, the, the steam technology and the Hextech technology and, you know, the, the new ways of hunting and fighting these monsters and just how their culture is developed. Uh, and, in fact, um, the monsters are so integral to their culture uh, that they worship uh, Naga Kabaros, uh, or the Bearded Lady, which uh, is kind of a Kraken serpent type creature. And uh, that is central to their religion. Uh, in fact, the the temple of the bearded lady, or the temple of the the serpent, is in uh, Bilgewater itself, um, at the very top. In fact, let's see if I can pull up a picture of it here. Yeah, so you can see right here at the very top, 
um, oh, you can't see my mouse, but up in the top of this picture, you can see that temple. And this is actually where Elawi, who is the kind of the high priestess of the serpent or of the kraken, um, she will test souls and she'll, um, you know, make sure people are worthy and, and uh, they serve as kind of a defense even in many cases against the encroaching of the, uh, of, of the shadow isles here. Uh, and so very recently, actually, um, you know, this, this harrowing took place where the Shadow Isles kind of, um, the Black Mist kind of spread out, uh, and Alawi was a major part of kind of pushing all of that back. But yeah, but Bilgewater itself, like I said, um, is built around this amalgamation of the Buru culture, but also it's built of just kind of the resources that they had available. There's not a lot of natural resources in the Serpent Isles, uh, and so the city is actually built out of like old ships and, and whatever resources they had. Um, and so the lower you are, basically, uh, the worse off you are. And so the lower elements, this would be called Rat Town, and that's kind of the poorest area of the city. Um, you can see the slaughter docks over here, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, but, and then the higher, the higher parts would be like the richer manors and mansions, and it gets fancier. Um, you want to be high and dry, basically. Um, at the bottom, there's dangers, there's sea monsters there's uh there's wharf rats which this is actually a razor fin which is an adult wharf rat but they're terrifying and there's like just these um packs of wharf rats and, and razor fins uh that will go through the streets uh, and ba they'll basically just attack people and, and kill them um and eat them and let's see here yeah like i said you can see the temple here at the very top um this would be the butcher's uh bridge and the entrance to Bilgewater Bay, where you would be able to, you know, get to, to Rat Town or to the Slaughter Docks, which the Slaughter Docks are kind of the center of economy here um, in Bilgewater. And they, uh, this is where ships will come in and they'll drop off any sea monsters uh, that they've captured uh, to be stripped at these carving bays. Uh, and basically they use all the resources from these uh, enormous creatures um, and, you know, create a giant trade out of it. And like I said, it's very much like whaling um, in in real life where it's it's extremely brutal. Um, but, you know, it's it's kind of a way of life that's evolved uh, not only for, through Bilgewater, but from Uru culture as well. And so, yeah, that's that's a little bit of a insight into Bilgewater. It's definitely not everything. Um, I intend to, to spend some time um, maybe talking a little bit more about some of the individual champions uh, and how that they um, fit into the, the grander scheme of Bilgewater. But I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you're interested, make sure to check out my uh, the, the campaign on the same channel. Uh, the first episode is out now. There'll be another one every Friday. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching.